Hey guys, this is Vadim with Max Tech, and right here in front of me is the M1 MacBook Pro. Now, previously I made a gaming video using this machine, and I tested out games like iOS and iPad games using side loading. I played games under Rosetta. I even installed Crossover and played some Windows games like Witcher 3, which ran incredibly well. I played Team Fortress 2 and other games like Diablo 3. However, a lot of you guys were doubting the performance. You were saying that those are old games, they don't count as AAA titles. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. I went to twitch.tv and I took a screenshot of the top 10 most popular, most viewed games right now. The point of this video is not to try and prove that the M1 MacBook Pro is a great AAA gaming machine, because it's not. I actually think that's coming next year with the M1X. That chip is expected to have anywhere from 40 to 45,000 metal graphics score compared to this machine with the M1, which has around 22,000. But the point is to try and see that for people who want a MacBook for doing their work or professional app usage, if they can just buy the MacBook by itself without having to buy another gaming PC on top of that. The first game on that list was, of course, Minecraft, so let's go ahead and run it. All right, here we are in Minecraft Java, the Mac edition. This is running under Rosetta emulation. As you can see, I have the stats opened up, and I'm getting around 89 80 FPS, it does dip down sometimes, let's see, 81, 93, 76, 99, 101, so I'll show you guys the graphic settings right here. We're set to the full screen resolution current, which is basically the native res that it has open. Looks like it's actually 2048 by 1280. Graphics set to fancy, that's maxed out. Smooth lighting, maxed out. View bobbing on, clouds are set to fancy. All of the particles, so this is basically maxed out. The render distance is set to 12 chunks, which is the default. So let's go back into here, and you can see we're getting 9382 FPS. So as you guys can see, we are not getting any less than 60 FPS. This is running perfectly smooth. Let's see what happens if we turn it up. Let's do render distance to 16 chunks. FPS going down 66, 69, 55, 52. So it looks like enabling higher render distance, 48 I actually saw. It does go down quite a bit, but as you can see, we're seeing incredibly far. That's actually the thing that has the biggest impact on the FPS. Turn it down a little bit, let's go to 14 chunks. And the FPS went up a little bit, look at 63, 68, 80 right now. So I've gotta say that the performance is really impressive with everything maxed out, even if you wanna turn up the render distance as well. Now let's test out if I basically turn everything down. Let's go to fast, turn off smooth lighting, turn off the clouds, particles, basically minimal. Render distance, let's go to two chunks view bobbing off, let's turn everything down to the minimum and see what we get. 152 FPS, 149. So if you really wanna turn the settings down, as you can see, we're getting great FPS, 146 I saw there as a minimum. You could cook this up to a 144 hertz display if you really wanna play at that high of FPS. Now let's test out how hot the CPU is. We're looking at 75 degrees Celsius. The fans are idling. GPU is at 97%. So even with the GPU maxed out, getting really good performance, sitting at 75 degrees. So there you go, Minecraft runs perfectly fine on these first M1 MacBooks. Next up on that list, we have CSGO. So let's go ahead and open the Mac version of Steam. As you can see, I have it installed right here, so let's play. And here we are, let's play some arms race. By the way, the speakers on these MacBooks are just so much better than any other laptop out there. What's up, bro? Oh, okay, we are getting some weird, I don't know if it's like lag or something but this is pretty stuttery. Even though our FPS is decent, for some reason this game has been stuttering. As you can see, it just went up above 100 FPS. 62 FPS, I think that's so far the lowest I've seen. 109, so it does fluctuate a little bit, 64. So I'll show you, we are sitting at 1440 by 900, that is pretty low. The texture detail and the effect detail is on medium, so it's not all the way down, but a lot of this other stuff 
I've lowered trying to get better performance. I'm not sure why we're not getting that good of performance in CSGO, but let me just turn this up a little bit, show you 2048 by 1280. We are going lower, 59. So we are getting less, 51. Definitely not the best, 50 FPS. I think if you want a perfect gaming experience, you're gonna have to go down to 1440 by 900 to get a minimum of 60, which is really what you want. So at this higher resolution, as you can see, we went down to like 46 FPS. Definitely not perfect, so you are gonna wanna turn it down. I found that 1440 by 900 was optimal. Not the best graphics, but it is playable at a minimum of 60 FPS, which is what you want. So let me show you, we're sitting at 74 degrees Celsius with the fans at idle. It's really not bad playing CSGO on an extremely thin and light MacBook Pro. Now I'm back playing at 1440 by 900, sitting at 67, 60 FPS right now. Not too bad, but what makes us the most impressive is that we're running with an integrated graphics chip that takes an incredibly low amount of power. 5.6 watts of power under full load, which is absolutely unheard of. Because of that, you get a really special feature. Watch this. Unplugging the power cable does not change the performance. As you can see, we're still running the same as before. That is exclusive to MacBooks. You cannot get that with a Windows laptop. Now with that, let's move on to the number three most viewed game on Twitch, and that is Fortnite. Let's go ahead and play. All right, here we are in the Fortnite settings. As you can see, we're set to windowed full screen with the resolution set to 1680 by 1050. Now that's because the aspect ratio is 16 by 10. It's not 16 by nine, so we can't do perfect 1080p. I've got the quality presets set to medium, except I've fully matched out the 3D res to make sure it's sitting at that resolution. I've turned off the motion blur, the V-Sync, and let's go ahead and get into the game. Walking around, it looks like we're at an average about 80 FPS. Looks like we're hitting 90 sometimes, 84, 85. This is actually really good, and it's playing very smooth. I'm not noticing the weird stuttering. This is playing perfectly fine. Oh, someone's right here. Get out of here, bro. Woo -hoo -hoo! What's up? Very good, sitting at around, I'd say 75 average FPS so far. Looks like we hit a minimum of 58 for a second right there. Oh, I see somebody, watch this, watch this. Oh, I missed. What is he doing, dude? Got him. Now here's the kicker. I don't hear the fan at all. Now here's something to put into perspective. Earlier this year in May, we tested out the new 2020 $1,800 MacBook Pro as well as the base model. We hooked that up to an eGPU with a display and we were getting an average of 85 FPS with the $1,800 model and 65 FPS with the base $1,300 model. Now that was at 1080p set to high here we're set to a little bit lower, so 15% less than 1080p, set to medium, but this is getting close to the performance of an eGPU setup of last year's $1,800 higher end MacBook Pro. Like, that is insane. The point I'm trying to make here is that this is still running under Rosetta. This is a Mac X86 app. It's not yet optimized for Apple Silicon, and we're getting performance like this a minimum of 58 FPS. And just to show you guys, we're sitting at 83 degrees Celsius with the fans just above idle. Looks like 2600 RPM, that's about, I don't know, 20, 25%. 85 degrees Celsius with the GPU maxed out, CPU at 20, so not that bad. It's definitely running hot, but keep in mind how thin and light this MacBook Pro is. Now with that, let's move on to the number four game on that list, which is of course World of Warcraft. And this is the only AAA title that has been updated for Apple Silicon. So it's gonna be running natively, but unfortunately I do not have it installed on this machine. And that is because we need the extra storage for the brand new Cyberpunk 2077, which we are going to be playing. So we might actually have that video out. So if we do, definitely check it out after this video. But I do have World of Warcraft installed on the base $1,000 MacBook Air with the seven core GPU and it's fanless. So let's switch over to this machine. All right, here we are. And unfortunately I don't play this game. So I only have a level 13 monk 
but let's get right into it. Here we are in the graphics settings. As you can see, we're set to full screen windowed, 2560 by 1600. That's native resolution and 100% resolution scale. And we're set to five out of 10 for the graphics quality. And here we are just running around like normal. And we're getting about, let's see, 52, 53 FPS right now, 55. So not perfect, but pretty impressive for the graphics settings that we're playing at on a MacBook Air. Now let's see if we can get into a dungeon. So here we are in a dungeon. It looks like we're getting about 44 FPS right now. So it went down 42 FPS, 41. So definitely not perfect at these graphics settings. Keep in mind, we are using the seven core MacBook Air right now. So you would be getting a little bit better FPS with the MacBook Pro with eight cores. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna turn down the graphics quality to three. So now we are getting a little bit better FPS. Looks like, look at that, 60 FPS. Looks like even in battle set to graphics level three, we're sitting at a consistent 60 FPS. And obviously there's no fan noise because there are no fans. And here we have a boss fight still sitting at 60 guys. Who would have thought you could play WoW on a fanless MacBook Air. All right, so after playing for about, let's say 20 minutes, let's check on the temps. 51 degrees Celsius, guys, with no fan at all. The MacBook Pro would have at least been at idle, so it would be helping the cooling a bit, but this has no fan sitting at 51. So guys, I'm blown away by this performance. We're back on the MacBook Pro, and next up on the list is Grand Theft Auto 5. Now you might be wondering, how is that gonna run on Apple Silicon because that's a Windows game. It's not available for the Mac. So I was using Crossover to play a couple of games. I played Witcher 3, I played Final Fantasy X, I played Team Fortress 2. So I was able to use that to play Windows games, but unfortunately, Grand Theft Auto V did not run because during the installation and while trying to run the game, it glitches out because it can't load up the social club launcher for some reason. So because of that, I couldn't even get it to turn on. So that's unfortunate and that's a fail for this game, but hopefully crossover will be updated soon and we might be able to get it to run. Now let's move on to the number six game on the twitch.tv list. This is League of Legends. Let's see how good a performance we get. All right, here we are in League and I wanna show you guys the video settings. Native resolution, 2560 by 1600, full screen, everything maxed out on very high. Look at this, 78, 80 FPS right now. No issues at all. I have not seen it go below 60 at all so far. Now what makes this even more interesting is that I personally have a 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro with a dedicated graphics card and that machine cannot run League this well. I actually had to resort to playing TFT, not League, because it just wouldn't run well at all. It'd be all stuttery and glitchy. I could not get this much FPS which is very, very interesting that we're getting this good a performance on the lower end 13 inch. I just saw it go down to 65, 64 FPS. We are dipping down to 50 while fighting the dragon. So as you guys can see, getting pretty decent FPS. Now when we did fight the dragon, it did go down to about 46. So if you want to get perfect or great FPS, you will want to turn down the settings a little bit, maybe the resolution, or the actual quality. And let's go ahead and look at our temps. We're sitting at 59 degrees Celsius. Look at that, 52, just a split second later, it just cooled down. The fan is off. The fan's not even idling playing League of Legends. That's how easy it is for this game to run, which is crazy. Moving on to the number seven game on that list is Among Us. Obviously, that's an incredibly easy game, but I have it here in the Steam Mac library, so I'll just show you guys. And it looks like, for some reason, it's not running in Steam. So let me switch over to Crossover and let me run the Windows version of this game. As you can see, we have Crossover open, and within that, we have the Windows version of Steam. Now, this is the 14-day free trial, so I'm still using that. And this is what I used to play Witcher 3, which is a Windows game. I also played Final Fantasy X, so if you haven't seen that gaming video, definitely watch that one after this. 
but here you go, Among Us, the Windows version. Here we are, running perfectly, 60 FPS, solid, as you'd expect playing an easy game like this, but I mean, there you go. Mini games obviously work perfectly fine. All right, we voted for Kit. Oh, he's not the imposter. Uh, yep, he was the imposter. Obviously that worked fine. The fan was off, 68 degrees Celsius, no issues. Now moving on to the number eight game on that list, which is Call of Duty Warzone. Unfortunately, I tried to play it, but it did not even launch. There was an error using crossover, so that sucks. It failed for Warzone, at least for now. Number nine on that list is Dota 2, and I have it installed right here on the Mac version of Steam. So let's run it. Here we are in Dota 2 in the graphics settings. Now I messed around with this already, and I found that the best graphics settings are 16 by 10 aspect ratio, obviously, 2048 by 1280, which is actually higher than 1080p, exclusive full screen. Now I turned all the graphics down to the lowest. For some reason, the performance isn't as great in this game. Everything's on low, but I did turn up the graphics render quality to 100%, so it's running at that resolution. And I am just gonna do a solo practice with bots game, so when I do leave this, I don't upset anybody. Here we are in game getting, let's see, 88 FPS at these settings. So the game obviously does not look very good, but for some reason it doesn't perform as well as the other games that I've tested, but 88 FPS. So now that I'm in battle, looks like 75, 74 FPS. So still above 60. In fact, I haven't seen it go below 60 once. Looks like even during this team fight, minimum of 68 FPS, not bad. So even now in this team fight, no issues at all, 60 FPS, 59 FPS minimum. All right, here we have a battle going on in mid, 72 FPS right now. Definitely not bad at all. 70, 53, it just dipped to 53, 52. So I'd say the performance is definitely not that great, but you could turn down the resolution a little bit lower if you wanted to. Let's do that, let's turn it down a little bit more. 1680 by 1050. 63 FPS right now, 69, 70 with a bunch of stuff going on. All right, team fight, let's see, 51 FPS. 47 right there, wow, it dipped. Not the best experience for Dota 2, unless you wanna turn everything really low, like to, I don't know, 1440 by 900. So after playing for about half an hour, let's go ahead and turn this off and see our temps here. There you go, we're at 54 degrees Celsius. The fans are still idling at around 1200 RPM. We just turned off Dota 2, so I'd say overall I'm extremely impressed with the, the temps and the low fan noise while playing these games. And finally, the last game on that list is Valorant. And as you know, that's a Windows game, and unfortunately it's not on Steam. And any other launchers that I've tried using Crossover have not worked, only Steam, so unfortunately, I can't test out that game. So now, after trying to test out and play the top 10 most viewed games on Twitch, here are my conclusions. All in all, we were able to play and run seven out of the top 10 games, which is actually very impressive for a brand new Apple Silicon M1 Mac after less than a month after its release. And out of those seven games, I'd say that at least five of them ran decently well. And in general, while playing those games, the highest temps that we saw were about 81 to 83 degrees Celsius, and the fan speed only went up to around 25% of the maximum. I could only hear it if I got really close to the MacBook Pro, which does not happen with any other Windows laptop. So here's my final conclusion. If you wanna buy the M1 MacBook Pro for professional use, or just browsing the web getting incredibly good battery life, you can do so and you can play some of the most popular games on the side. And this makes me very excited for next year because this is the first Apple Silicon chip with integrated graphics. And next year, of course, we're expecting the M1X chip. And I think that is going to absolutely kill for AAA gaming, especially when a lot of these bugs get ironed out with crossover and more games get updated for Apple Silicon. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe for our review of the M1 MacBook Pro coming very soon. Definitely check out 
the other gaming videos that I did right over there. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.